Well, as we continue reading at God's word together, let's ask his help to understand it. Father God, we ask now that you would speak to us, that we might hear, that we might understand, that we might change. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're reading today Luke 22, 63 through to 23, 12. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, are you then the Son of God? He replied, you say that I am. Then they said, why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, we have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up all the, pe uh, the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he'd been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Do you ever feel as though the world is against you and you bounce from one situation to another where you neither belong uh, nor feel comfortable? And perhaps feel opposed or picked on or uh, let down or um, just uh, everything feels against you. Well, Jesus in these verses is bounced from the uh, religious leaders to the, the secular power to uh, the puppet king. Uh, almost a toy as he's uh, placed between these different courts of power and questioned and toyed with. Just look at the ways that uh, the king Jesus, the Son of God, is treated. Uh, the religious leaders' guards uh, mock him. They blindfold him and demand that he prophesy. If he's the Son of God, he's, he's the Messiah, if he's the greater than Moses, he can prophesy. And so they, they wallop him while he's blindfolded. Who hit you? And they just insult him. Uh, and then uh, he's dragged before the religious leaders at the daybreak, first thing in the morning. That's how keen they are to get this prosecuted. And uh, he's toyed with. If you are the Messiah, they say, tell us. They know they can't trip him up. They can't uh, outfox him with their questions. They've tried that and been silenced. And so now they're trying to draw from his own lips a claim to, to Godhead. Jesus again responds, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask, you should not answer. But then he makes the statement really that they're looking for. He says, from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. And they understand exactly what he's saying. And they press him, are you the son of God? You say that I am, he says. And that's it. That's a blasphemy as far as they're concerned. They've heard it from his own lips. They have every reason to put him to death. But notice that when they then go to Pilate, they don't say, here's a blasphemer. They don't say, here's one who claims to be the son of God. They don't uh, say any of those things. What they say to Pilate is, this man is subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar claims to be a messiah 
So they've opposed him on theological grounds themselves, but now they try and get him into trouble on political grounds before uh, the governing authority. And so Pilate's drawn in and he asks the question, uh, but Pilate in a sense is uh, not playing the game. He can't see any reason why this man should be, should be charged. He doesn't see that he's done anything for him, but as the, the Jewish leaders press, he's stirring up the people. He started in Galilee, and that's Galilee, and that's news to Pilate. Great, I can send him to Herod. That's his jurisdiction. And so Jesus is bundled off to Herod. Herod's rubbing his hands with glee. He's been looking forward to meeting Jesus and perhaps eliciting a, a miracle or two. It's almost as though he's a common uh, magician. But Jesus refuses to answer him at all. The chief priests are still with him. They're, they're clearly trailing around. They're, they're desperate to pin something on him, to get him into a position where they can get rid of him. And so they, they go from one secular power to another, and they vehemently accuse Jesus before a Herod. And then Herod's soldiers and Herod ridicule and mock Jesus. They, they dress him in this elegant robe, and they send him back to Pilate. And as these different powers are all arrayed against Jesus and his bounce from one to another, they get united, actually. Herod and Pilate, who have been political enemies, have become friends now, united in their opposition to, to Jesus. And, folks, this is God. This is God come to earth. This is Emmanuel, God with us, who has been treated like this, rejected, scorned, despised, beaten, abused, exactly as God predicted 700 years ago, but 700 years previously through Isaiah. Jesus allowing himself to be treated like this, allowing himself to stand before uh, these kangaroo courts, some of them, allowing himself to stand before these uh, governors that he has put in place by his sovereign power and will, as we read elsewhere, willing to be treated like this as part of the rescue plan for our sin to draw us away from the death and condemnation which we deserve. How much he must love us to go through this for our salvation. And how horrible our rejection of him. How wicked humanity is to be united in its opposition to Jesus. How we need to pray. How we need to seek forgiveness for ourselves and how we need to plead for a broken world which continues to reject the Saviour. Let's pray. Father, for those of us who love Jesus, who recognise him as your son, who have bowed the knee to him as our Lord and Saviour, who are so grateful for his rescue of us, we are grieved as we read these words and see how he is treated by the people he has made, the people who at the very moment they were striking him, were who were dependent on his, on their breath, on him for their every breath. And how foolish is the continued rejection of the world. And how those of opposite opinions today, whether of religious, different religious flavours or atheist or, or agnostic, all actually in the end united in their opposition, to the truth claims of Jesus. And how foolish in the light of his resurrection and ascension and his one day return. Father, help us as believers to feel the depth of our sin that should reject Jesus and treat him so. Help us to fear for the world around us in its rebellion. And Father, we ask that the mercy that has saved us would extend to those around us. Help us to speak with others of Jesus and point them to the Saviour. We ask these things in Jesus' name.